What's going on beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in, for watching, for hitting the play button on this video and maybe also on other videos. I appreciate your appreciation of the bullshit rants and ramblings that I keep putting out and that somehow you keep listening to. So thank you guys. I love you. I love every single one of you guys. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys about some past business failures that I've had and how they taught me how I'm moving forward now as a result of all these so-called failures, but really they were lessons, very valuable lessons, okay, and how they're helping me move forward now. So every fa failure is a lesson. It's not a cliche saying. It is true. There's no such thing as failure. It does not exist. Failure doesn't exist. Failure doesn't exist. Only lessons do. So we'll start off with back in, what is the year now? 2017. Back in 2000 and I'm trying to remember 2008. Yes, there was the Euro Cups. Okay, the one Spain won. And I had an idea, business idea, me and two other friends that we're gonna sell flags. You know those little flags people put on their cars to support their team. You know Germany, Spain, whatever, whatever. So we decided, okay, we want to sell these flags. And the way we, you know, went on about it is said, okay, we're going to post stop at gas stations and we're just going to wait for people to come in and fill up their gas and kind of hype it up. And, you know, we had tables and everything, hype it up and, you know, have different flags, etc., etc., And, you know, hype it up for the people and tell them, hey, support this team, support this team. And yeah, so... We had the idea, we thought, oh man, it's going to fucking kick ass, you know, it's going to blow this shit up, you know, we've seen people do it before, apparently one of my friends said, this other guys used always do it all the time, and they made a lot of money last World Cup, which was two years ago, so we decided, okay, we want to get in on this, make some money. Actually, sorry, this wasn't 2008, my bad, this was 2010, now I remember. 2010, the World Cup 2010, the one also Spain won. See, this, that's where the mix-up comes in. Because Spain was winning everything, that Euro, World Cup, and another Euro. So, World Cup 2010, that was World Cup 2010, sorry. So, we go to this random guy, we find this random guy in Kijiji, and we go, and he's the sketchiest guy ever. I think he was coked up, he was on drugs, and he sells us these drugs, okay, or... Sells us these drugs. Oops. Sells us these flags. We show, show us little flags, you know, and everything. I think we invested, we invested like, I don't remember, 300 to $500. So we just kind of split it between all three of us. And we thought, okay, we'll buy more England flags because people in Canada tend to support England more. We bought some, you know, different flags. We bought Germany. We bought England. We bought some Brazil, some Argentina, uh, but we focused more on, you know, the European teams because, you know, that's, we thought, okay, the Canadian population would support and, you know, we looked and we remember seeing a lot of England flags during the Euro and the World Cup before. So, you know, we thought, okay, so we invest 300 to $500 and we start to post up at gas stations and we're pumped up. We're thinking, you know, we're going to make some good money, right? And uh, yeah, we first day we did it, we didn't sell a single flag, but we ran into a problem. We kept getting kicked out of gas stations, man. We kept getting kicked out of gas stations. The gas stations kept kicking us out. So we would go from one gas station to another, we would get kicked out. One gas station to another, we would get kicked out. We kept trying, trying. We posted at different gas stations, different towns, different cities, same thing. They would kick us out. Just boom, get out of here. And we ended up, after trying so much, we ended up selling uh, 
magnificent one flag. It was a Sudanese guy, he was coming out of his car and he was going into the gas station. Older guy, right, in his 40s or 50s. And we talked to him a little bit, trying to, hey, you want to support this, you want to support this? And it was an England flag that we sold them. And I think he just like, he looked at us, he's like, I, you know, I, in his mind, he's like, look at these pathetic, look at these three pathetic guys. And he was like, he was, like, was a nice guy, right? And uh, he's just like, okay, here, give me a flag, I'll buy it. So we sold it, I think 15 bucks or 20 bucks, I don't remember. And uh, that's it, that was the only flag we sold. So we basically invested $500 between three of us and we made back 20 bucks. So that was a business loss. And that's it, so we decided, okay, fuck it, this is not gonna work, or, you know, bullshit. And uh, I had like a shit ton of flags in, leftover flags, I ended up just giving them to people because, you know, like fuck, whatever. We invested this money, it wasn't that much money anyway. And it was kind of fun, going around, talking to people, trying to sell people, trying to like, you know, it was good, you know, it was like a first exper experience in talking to people, in interacting with people, and trying to sell something. So that was that, uh, and um, fast forward a little bit, a few years later, this was, let me remember, because when I make these videos, guys, I'm just like going on, I don't plan, like I'm just going on memory here, so let's go. This was 2010, first year university, second year, third year, sometime around 2012, 2013, there you go, I, I got the year right, sometime around 2012, 2013, uh, we, I met a guy, business guy, I don't know what's, where he is now, but very entrepreneur minded, and I was also now befriending two other guys, we were very close, and we always talked business, politics, about the world, you know, philosophy, all of it. And we always like, you know, talked about like wanting to dress up in suits and wanting to be rich and all of that. So this guy comes along, we get to know him, right? We met him in, in the library, this was in the university, we were all going to university at the time. And he has this idea, it's, it's a pretty smart idea and I'll tell you guys about the idea briefly here. Maybe you can go make some use of it in your own life or something or if you're into it it's real estate so here's the idea the idea was a really good idea we live in uh, i live in hamilton around mcmaster university and i was going to mcmaster university at the time so the idea is this landlords let's say you're a landlord you have six rooms to rent but you're only renting four of them and let's say you're renting a room for 500 dollars. you have two empty rooms the whole year you're missing out on thousand bucks a month. That comes up to twelve thousand dollars a year. Twelve thousand dollars a year. That's a lot of money that the landlord is missing on. Is missing out on. So we would go to the landlords and we would say, "Hey, you know, we, we notice you're missing two rooms. How many rooms are you renting? Oh, four out of six. Okay, how about this? We guarantee you next year we will bring you a group of six people to rent out your house." So you will be making full profit. In return, give us back a commission. And so we went on a hunt to hunt, to hunt down all the landlords, all their names, the houses. You know, we had like databases. We started running it like a real business, right? And you know what? We made good money first year. We made $10,000 between the four of us off of two months work because the, the, the house... The house season he is like between December, January, right? So that's where everybody finds, gets their friends together, finds houses. And we develop this database where we take in people's uh, inputs and um, we get them to fill out this form. We advertise online, on campus. We had flyers. We were really doing some good work. And we made good money first year, you know, $10,000 between the four of us. So in, in a matter of two months, you know, a lot of work in those two months. And the beautiful thing is that I think that year really like made a difference in my life because uh, we would go to random landlords and random students and tell them about this. So uh, we got to talk to so many people and we got to be rejected by people and we got to be accepted by certain people and we got to talk with people and we got to really 
just come and introduce yourself. And so that developed a lot of my social skills right there and then. And it was like very uncomfortable calling on a random landlord saying, hey, my name is this and this, I'm from this company. And, um, you know, we're calling about the house and explaining the idea on the phone and trying to get a meet up with them. Sometimes they just tell you, fuck off. Other times they actually start up a meeting. Other times they'll tell you, call back later. You call back later, nobody picks up. So really, really interesting experience that really accelerated my social skills, the development of my social skills, you see? That's why it's very important to get out of your comfort zone and it's very important to do these things. It's not for the outcome, but it's for who you become. It's like uh, Elliot Hall says, it's not about, uh, what was it? It's not about the outcome, it's about who you become or something like that. So who always becoming is somebody who is got these social skills, can introduce himself, can talk to people, can you know, develop social cues, uh, pick it up on a subconscious level and just really get like cold calling and uncomfortable and made some money off of it too. So that wasn't bad, right? That wasn't bad. We took the money. Most of it, we invested it back to for the second year of the business. But the second year was a disaster. It just, it was a disaster. Things were crumbling and um, we decided, all right, no more. Okay, no more. I'm, we're not going to do this anymore. Uh, it's been nice doing it. We gain a lot, gain a lot of experience and that's where we'll end it here then third business followed shortly after so right after that i created a website i want it to be like a kijiji or a craigslist but just for rentals in the greater toronto area and i spent a lot of like a, de a good amount of money on the website and uh, launching it and uh, i learned some basic coding very basic, very, very basic. I learned how to use like HTML and I learned how to use CSS, not to make the codes, but to use them and put them together. And uh, I got to do some computer work. I made the website, we launched the website and uh, we just kind of got lazy about like promoting it and uh, going on about, you know, spreading it. And we got some listings there. We made a little bit of money, but I've decided because it was the same two guys I was working with and so th with the first business after we we said that's it no more uh, one of the guys that guy who actually brought the original idea we just was gone was not to be seen anymore but me and the other two guys that I was always close with we wanted to work on this new thing and we made the website we got some listings on it but got lazy and it was around that time that I wanted to start YouTubing you see it was around that time that I wanted to start YouTubing. And I told these two guys, I'm not working on this anymore. They were disappointed. But I told them, I found my passion. I found what I actually want to do in life. I can't do this anymore. I know I spent a lot of money on it. And I used money because I was working an internship. I saved up money. So it was mostly my money. So I told these guys, hey, I'm not doing this anymore. Forget about it. Uh, they were disappointed. But I said, that's it. I found my passion. I found my, that's it. I'm, I, it's calling me. And that's when I started doing YouTube. So like I, lots and lots and lots of experience there accumulated because I just always was willing to try new things, put myself out of the comfort zone. And even though we were disappointed in that we projected numbers to make money, we didn't make them lots of disappointments, but also immense lessons that still are with me today. You see? And yeah, like I'm going about right now, like I'll be honest with you guys, I'm going about this business and I'm building a business infrastructure around it, right? So I'm writing a book right now and I'm creating products and I'm studying, you know, marketing and stuff. And I'll be honest, like I'm gonna, I'm building a business around this, you know, and uh, as it grows and as I, you know, finish, I'm spending a lot of time because this is for me something that is worth worth it this is my life this is my life's work what I want to share with people so even everything that I learned up until now is definitely uh, come in handy as I as I continue to you know work on this and pursue entrepreneurship along with this making you know a business out of YouTube and I'm looking forward I'm looking forward Life is one big giant experiment, guys. Experiment, get out of your comfort zone, try different things. It's not about the outcome, it's about who you become. 
and then sometime at somewhere at some place you will find that thing that tingles your balls and your ovaries and turns your light bulbs on and then you'll go you'll do amazing at it and you'll make money off of it and all the things that you've done before have led you up to this point you see so that's it just wanted to share this with you guys so maybe you can go out there and fuck shit up and when i say fuck shit up i'm not saying it in like crush the world i'm saying get fucked by the world and you'll learn along the way that's it i love you guys love you love every single one of you uh you guys are all amazing wonderful beings thank you for listening thank you for watching but don't forget to subscribe or you're gonna sleep with the fishes